the end of the time period what happens? Uh, um, the computer is programmed to, uh, to make it disappear. That's exactly what happened. Yeah. So Mission Impossible. So basically, the library could have uh, multiple copies of any particular book, right? To download. In, in, from, well, I mean, let's talk about paper books first. Okay. So you can have yeah. one, two, three. Yeah. Right. So in electronic books, similarly, you have to you pay some kind of a service fee. So, and, and on that, you have, uh, depending on the kind of book it is, you might have one copy or two or three or four available. So, you, yeah. so basically, in the electronic world, I, I'm just trying to envision, I think I can envision how it works, but uh, someone, when someone returns an electronic book, they don't necessarily have to come to back to the library. Uh, they no. just delete it, it or do something. And then you know that that book is available again for someone else. Yeah, on overdrive. Okay. Um, so you have an application that deals with that. Very long waiting list, too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Chris. Yeah. Michael. So that's a fee for service? So is people pay the library a fee to, to download the book? And then? No. No. It's free to the, the patron. It's free to, okay. It's free to Just like library book. But you have to pay a fee to have that capability. And that's in a service? Is that is that an added service now that we didn't have in the past years, right? Yes, it's paid through the Merrimack Valley Library Consortium, and then we also get something extra called Overdrive Advantage, which buys extra copies just for North Brandon patrons. Okay. Quite a few libraries have been doing that. But it, there is no change in revenue based on no. this added? Thing. Okay. No. Um, our assessment did go up a little bit from MBLC, but really not. Greg, on the numbers that are proposed here, there are no issues? Yes. No, they meet the minimum requirement. No, I saw that. No, no, no further issues. And uh, I, I don't see any difference between your recommendations with any of the other. Nope, nothing. Nothing of substance. You did mention something, and I, I don't remember exactly where it was in your presentation now, Helena, that you said you might need more. Funds for. Uh, I believe it was a. If you hit the fifteen thousand threshold. Oh, the population. Just the population. No, there was some other program I think you were talking oh, about. Okay. Uh, Mrs. Bailey. Yeah, I think what Helena mentioned is um, things like Library, which is the online catalog, online announcement of what's new at the library. The friends are funding it this year. It's five hundred dollars yeah. a year, but it's something that really is the community is really receptive to and a lot of people sign up mm -hmm. for, we might seek in the future to have that be part of the budget. Okay. Just, uh, when you said Earlier. that the, yeah, the, the electronic books you said are expensive. Yes. You know, in relation to a yes. hardcover book? Yes. Well, they're, they're, they don't have the same, they don't have discounts. It's a little bit hardcover books. I don't know if you're doing any reading about any of this, but there's a lot of controversy Publishers are not really crazy about this whole model. So right now they're expensive, but it's, it's really the beginning of the downloadable book uh, world. And um, there's going to be other competitors coming in. Right now, Overdrive Base really more or less has a monopoly. Um, and, uh, now, now, as far as what you purchase of the electronic books, is that that does count towards our inventory oh, and yes. our expenditures. And the e-readers too count, yes. Yeah. And we did on the uh, spreadsheet here, we did move a little money from the book line item to electronic subscriptions so that it would cover something like that. So if we Safari books, but it's still books. I mean. if, if we purchase an electronic book, right, that's ours forever, basically? Or are no, we just renting it for a period of time? That's another controversy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Overdrive owns those books. So, in a way, we're yeah. leasing. Well, 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 what would, what would prevent you from purchasing them from Amazon, say? You know, when you go to, you buy a Kindle or something, I mean, you can purchase the yeah, but, books online. For yeah, but that's designed, Steve, to go to a specific user or user account. Right. The library is a distributor of many accounts. I can understand. Right that aspect of it. I was trying to understand though is, you know, when you procure a book, 
is it the libraries forever or are we leasing it for a period of time? I guess that's what I'm trying to understand. We're leasing it and it can be read by No, but are we le and when we lease it, are we leasing it for a year? Uh, five years? I don't know if I know a week? I think the finance. Uh, on the overdrive, we pay a fee to overdrive when they buy the books um, for those, and then they have overdrive. You, I hadn't heard of it, but you talked about overdrive advantage, where they have books that are specifically for not ready. Like additional copies. If, if, Something we, if we get into that program. It's a hunger game. But, but mm -hmm. right now, the program that we're in, overdrive buys the books, and then we pay, we pay a fee through the library associ well, through through our association fees. And then everybody can access overdrive. Yeah. So and we're not actually buying the books yet. Right. But the, the books, the selection is made by MDLC a committee. Okay. And it's it's pretty well driven by the population. They pretty much know what's going on. So if 50 people walked into the library and wanted a, a, a single book through overdrive, those 50 people could get it all at once? Or is there a limit Most to the number? Them, not the really popular ones. They'd have to wait. But there might be 10 copies, and there'd be a smaller one. And there's some where you have unlimited users. They're not the new, really popular ones. Mm -hmm. Mr. Mrs. Sheehan, seeking recognition. I tend to use yes. this a lot, commuting back and forth to work. Um, and it's very hard to get a book because you have to actually gonna go on a waiting list for it, and then you get an email at home that tells you when you can download it. I see. And it's, it's very popular. Pretty much every book on there, there's a waiting list for it. <laughs> every book. Mrs. Bailey. And if you want a picture, and, and Sharon Kelleher, who's vice chair of the trustee, and works at the Barricka Library, can jump in yeah. if, I, if I go wrong. But I think if you, uh, if you think of Overdrive as sort of a giant interlibrary loan, the books are out there in the Merrimack Valley Library system. And there might be someone in Tewksbury or Nandover or North Reading who wants a single book, ebook, and you get in line for it. And when your number comes up, it doesn't belong to the North Reading Public right. Library. We purchase some extra copies Ooh, for it. Yeah, and maybe you want to describe that? Yes, yeah. like Helena was saying, that the, the overdrive we pay through mm -hmm. MVLC, and it, it is like the interlibrary loan. There may be 20 copies of The Hunger Games, and now 100 people want that book because a movie's come out, and you just have to get on the list like everyone else. We also have an overdrive advantage, which a lot of libraries are trying to come up with the money for because it allows you to buy 10 more copies of Hunger Games that only your library patrons could have, and it cuts down the weight. Ms. Stevens. By, by example, what would it cost someone to, to get a book or to, to, I guess, rent the book, or whatever the term is now? <laughs> You mean if they bought it on Amazon? No, no, I, I guess. Oh, the, the what would the cost? Um, if, if, if a resident, you may have 10 books, correct? We, we, we have to buy or lease the 10 books, whatever they may be. And I'm sure it's book specific because if one's a top book, it costs X amount of money. But what, just some type of idea, what does it cost us or you, the library, to, to reserve or rent? Lisa Book. Well, I, I mean, I, I, I have to get that information. I yeah, I, 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 think, I think it's a service that they yeah, buy into overdrive. They buy into overdrive, and that gives them the ability to offer their patrons the ability to download books at no cost to the patron. Yeah, exactly. So it's the whole service versus yeah. Yeah. They, they acquire the service. Yeah, that yeah, which is nice because it actually extends your open hours really realistically to 24 hours a day, right? Mm -hmm. And then beyond that, the Boston Public Library has the same, everybody's nice. entitled to a BPL card. You have even a larger collection. And if you like, I can send you an email to Overdrive and you can yeah, take a look at it. Like All right, I'd like to, uh, yeah, just, I just, just what's the additional cost for the Overdrive? And, and is the Overdrive uh, is just, that's the specific program and either you bought it or you didn't, or is it specific to different books or different genre of? Well, MBLC is part of our assessment, which is based on a formula, on circulation, on population, and, on, and then often they will ask us to put in some extra money for more e-books. 
All right, so the $25,000 basically for the assessment is that includes, that, that includes the overtime. It's a virtual branch, that's yeah. all it is. Any other questions regarding the budget numbers? No. I don't have any. Just I one, one quick question. On the compensation page, what is other compensation? Is that overtime or something? Or it's not described in because you've got everybody listed, but down the bottom you have $3,000 for other compensation. It's differential. It's the night differential. Okay. And that uh, went up a couple of years ago. That's fine. And also, yeah, basically that. It's, everybody gets a certain amount if they work after 5 o'clock. Okay, thank that's you. That's what that is. Okay. All right. Any other questions for Helene? Thank you. That was a very good presentation. Thank you very much. And thank you, we have veterans. Next page. Two thirty six. Good evening. First two line items um, I have on my <coughs> we have for a change on, on the veterans um, budget is for line item five three four one zero for the postage. Um, the VA caseload claims and the correspondence has the correspondence has dramatically increased. Uh, re resulting in the need of additional funds for postage. Um, so um, I'm requesting an additional 25 um, to assist me on that end of it um, to be able to continue on with the, um, the, the, the hard mailings that have been going through. Have you uh, taken into a services? Huh? Have you taken into account the increase in the uh, postage rates too? The what? I'm sorry. Increase in rates. Uh, no. Are they They're going up. Rates? They're going up again? They just went up. Yeah, they just went up, just right. Went up. Um, the, um, I mean, I, I try to handle as much as I can to a fax, as, as that I can <coughs> faxing, um, which is a, a huge help. Um, but some of these caseloads, and I'm looking at two, 300 pages that I'm actually submitting out, so, um, for the VA uh, comp. Um, the other, the other one was the line item for five seven one zero zero, um, which requires the physician to uh, do as much outreaching as possible uh, for those that are going to be in need and are in need of chapter one fifteen benefits, uh, nursing home visits, private home visitations for those that are unable to come to the office, and meeting uh, with um, agencies to assist the uh, the department and the, uh, for the betterment of the veterans and their dependents. Um, the increased mileage um, is also comes into play for all the events that the department is putting on too. There's a lot of running around for, for those things as well. Um, so I'm um, uh, requesting an additional 100 for the um, for the uh, mileage uh, on our end, on my end as well. Greg. Uh under the department head salary, mm -hmm. uh, the numbers are all over the place. Can you yeah. explain that? Oh, we're um, Sue would ask for a salary review, mm -hmm. and the, I haven't completed the salary review yet. So until the salary review is completed, what we've done is we've reflected the fact what our present salary is. That's what our present salary is under the administrator's recommended item. Okay. You're, so you're, you're requesting a 69 percent increase in salary? No. That? Okay. No. No. That's what the department had proposed. What I said was, I'm in the process of no, no. I'm, I'm, I'm asking Susan. Right. Oh, well, what I what I did was that I, you know, um, on recommendation that I um, so, uh, check out the surrounding towns um, that we have here, um, their populations and their salaries. Um, and as you can see, Wilmington um, is probably the closest that we have as far as population. 
Um, and that salary is at almost a 59 at this point. Um, 